Hey there, welcome back to Rippy D. Today we're gonna fly, completely ignore game mechanics, absolutely bring the game to its knees, and much more. Buckle up for the ride, this is about to be a wild one. Take a seat for me, Kelvin. Thank you. Calm down, YouTube. He's not dead, otherwise this wouldn't work. Don't ask me how I figured this out. It wasn't evil intentions, I promise. Turns out if you drive the golf cart at a down Kelvin until it stops and clips into him, and then keep holding W while reviving him, you get sent into space. This works on Virginia as well. It just feels much better to do it to Special K. Would you look at that? Boxes have collision and we can clip through them? I like where this is going. If you lock yourself in the middle of a box and keep jumping and flapping your arms around, you can fly as high as you want as long as you keep spamming space. I apologize for the weird noises he's making here, it's a bit disturbing. But now that we're as high as the mountain, if we pull out our glider, I'm sure we'll be fine. Talking about the hang glider, this is how high the glider blueprint launches you. Pretty cool. For casuals. What happens when we launch off of this with a Knight 5? Now we're talking, this is a real launch pad. If you jump off it in the air, you'll lose any height you're gaining and fall. Now after messing around with this a lot more, I noticed if I jump off, the Knight V will actually stay in place where you jumped off of it, floating in midair. If you miss it, I'll slow it down for you. So the next obvious idea was to blot out the sun. And don't worry, we'll do that in a bit. But for the Knight V, the stupid game wouldn't let me. They started despawning after about 15. On a more positive note though, after a while of trying, everything else seemed to be gravitating towards him. You get back here, golf cart. This next bug isn't necessarily flying, kinda in between. To make it easy for a video, I'm gonna use this blueprint, but I think it's a good transition to the next segment. All you need is a roof, stairs, anything built on an angle. You need a three quarter or less log to get started. Then if you look up and get this icon, not the one on the floor, it'll place the log down, but also give you an elevator to the next floor. Collision in this game is amazing. And you'll see where I'm going with this collision stuff. It gets much better. When you get to a bunker, it requires you to first collect these pesky key cards or actually play the game. This bunker makes you do an additional step, I won't spoil it, but I think I have a different idea. What if we chop down a tree and then grab two logs? Instead of finding all the key cards or doing the storyline at all, let's maybe place a log down about here and another one about here. Well, that was much easier. And if you're too lazy to chop down a tree like I am, you can also crouch swing a rock and then do a 180 for the same exact effect. The rest of the bunkers will load normally if you glitch yourself through the door, by the way. It doesn't stop anything from loading. In this bunker in particular, eventually we're gonna be running past this steam and finding our friend Timmy. Sean Ashmore will be blabbing away about getting a key or something here, but it obviously has to be the hand mark on the door. No. No? No, we're, what do you mean we're, we're missing, missing something? something? Oh, I get it. You probably want me to pick this thing up that's right next to the door, collect all that crap, and do what we're supposed to do. I think I know what we're really missing though, and it's not cowbell, but a few sticks. Now if I place one right about here, and here, and here, and here, perfect. So it turns out we don't need any of those silly blueprints or armor. Now that we've figured out what we're really missing, I'll just hop down here, and good luck, Timmy. When you get to this point in the bunker and hopped over the door we were supposed to open, most of the time, Timmy and the boss won't even spawn. Sometimes they do, but what does that matter anyway? These idiots still will, so we'll just run right by them. When you get to the end where Timmy is supposed to be, all we need to do is simply jump on top of the entrance. By the way, this works if the boss and Timmy's here. Three well-placed sticks and well, that's almost too easy. Now, if you're a real show-off and have the rope gun with End Knight's rip-off of Tony Macaroni's zippy mod, this is even easier. You start off a zip line here, and then shoot it down the hallway to about there, and then you can use a zip line to get past the event trigger that stops you from sliding through. And if for some absurd reason you've played the game the right way to get here and now want to glitch it, I have you covered as well. Hiding behind Timmy and facing the entrance will let the boss himself have the opportunity to cheese you through the spot that killing him is supposed to trick. I love how you can still hear Timmy shooting. Talk about Timmy, what the hell? You're not supposed to be here, you cheater. How'd you get through the golden door of the last entrance and people call me a cheater? Before we go into the cube, something I forgot to mention to you guys is I did a little extracurricular activity before we got there in the first place. This is where the final boss spawns on the map. A lot of people like to place traps to help them out here, but that means you have to collect all this crap as well as different blueprints. What I'm gonna do instead is build a fire. Why only build one fire though? You know what? I changed my mind, give me a second. So I built a few more, 143 more fires to be exact. And now that my FPS has gone to hell, let's trigger the end cutscene and see what happens. Yeah, well, Timmy, you cheated to get into the cube anyway, so I guess it's deserved. I love how all this madness has seeped its way into the cutscene. What a beautiful view with all the fires still lit. But we do still have this idiot having a temper tantrum, throwing helicopters and crap around. And he's getting out of the fires we set up. That wasn't supposed to happen. Good job, Timmy. Get him back in there. Now that Sean got the blob back in the fire, it's just a matter of time playing Duck Duck Goose, kiting him and his friends around through the barbecue. Once you've gotten them all up to medium rare, the internal temperature you're looking for, we've beaten the end boss and his friends by only running around in circles. I'm not gonna lie, this 
this took a long time to figure out, like a really long time. I figured out you could quote unquote sneak up on the new helicopters that are supposed to trigger and fly away when you get close. But if you approach these at certain angles on a glider or foot, they'll stay on the ground unanimated for a short amount of time. After playing around more, if you jump or move and find where they don't have hitboxes, you can ride them. But that's boring. I found that the collision with the log sled and the front of the helicopter really, really don't like each other. Once you get it into the right place, the sled will start to freak out, and the audio becomes absolutely beautiful. It's music to my ears. Ah, shucks, the game crashed. Let's give that another try. After about five hours of trying to do this again, and I'm not kidding, now that's the sounds we want to hear, and the sled is looking better than ever. When the brrrr slows down, and the game auto drops the sled, I learned we need to get the hell away from this fast. Like, really fast. The helicopters will keep spawning over and over for every collision that happens, so if you don't get away from this, the game is guaranteed to crash. And now that we've gotten some distance, we can all bask in the beauty. Look at that. We turned one helicopter into just a couple more. An F5 tornado of helicopters as well as the cheeky audio from my PC that's about to catch on fire. Another fun thing to do is aiming and shooting the shotgun at the same time. If you get the timing right, you get this effect. I thought it was just a visual bug, but it's definitely not. You can steamroll your way through any NPC when you get the timing of this down. For a visual non-useful bug, at least useful in any meaningful way I've found yet, give me time. If you empty a clip and need to reload certain guns and then pick up a log, you actually reload load the log instead. I don't know how this got missed. It's nothing crazy, just a funny bug. And this doesn't just happen every once in a while. It happens every single time until you reload the gun. It also works with multiple guns, not just the pistol. Duplicating objects in multiplayer is easy. All you have to do is have both players holding different objects than the one you're trying to pick up, and then spam E to pick up the object you want to duplicate. It's literally that easy. Single player seemed harder for a while. That's what she said. All you need is two separate shelves. I'll make sure to do this in the most extravagant way possible. Maybe a stick here, a stick there. Perfect. We'll add a shelf to both. Yup, that looks great. So does that. And now we're ready to go. I noticed there's four slots per shelf no matter what kind, and also a lot of objects like to stack to 10. So I thought, what if you had an odd amount of an item that stacks like that, maybe 11? Well, 10 go into that slot like normal, but I still have one left. What if I place that one in the next slot? I already like where this is going. I have one in 19, which means I already turned 11 bullets into 20. Next, I tried this on a different shelf and was pleased to see somehow one equals 10. There doesn't seem to be any end to this or fail safe by the devs. Perfect. After a few more times of doing this, we've done a magic trick and turned 11 bullets into 200. Okay, so for a bonus, the raining golf carts you saw in the intro. I was playing a multiplayer with Davo, which should be illegal. Plum and Rex, and we got this to happen. The ground is called Sight Terrain 2 Test in this game. Davo more or less figured this out, and this isn't a glitch without some command. I'm not going to do end night dirty. If we toggle go site 2 yada yada, the ground goes away and everything not anchored on it falls through. Like everything. If I toggle it back on, you'll even notice the grass fell through the map. I was using a command to fly, but if I put myself back on the ground and toggle it again, I as well fall through the map. But if you do something as simple as place a log down, it'll stay where it is and everything else falls through. This needs more testing as well, but back to the carts. If I spawn a few in, oh Jesus Christ, that may have been a little too much with all those fires still lit. Please don't crash. A little too much collision there. All right, I think we're good. And then do the same command, the golf carts will fall through the map. Now for the host, unfortunately, this is as exciting as it gets. And I should mention this only works in multiplayer. The host will only see this boring pile of crap, but everyone else in the server gets to see and hear this beautiful sight. And it doesn't happen once, it keeps doing it over and over and over. I'm purposely uploading this video on the one year anniversary of starting the channel. Anyone that's ever watched, liked, disliked, or commented on any video of mine, and especially subscribed, I appreciate all of you. We've come a long way.